All right, I guess we're going to have a couple stragglers later, but I want to get started. Um, so uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself and Arvindo. My name is Stephen Gurr, uh, Arvindo Kinney. We are software architects with Cerner Corporation. Um, if you haven't heard of us, we're a healthcare company. Um, we use a lot of open source, and we try to contribute back where we can. So, uh, uh oh, here they come. We'll wait. No, that's cool. <laughs> Um, so please go to uh, github.com Cerner, check out our projects. Um, there are a lot of people that are hard at work at them um, and very proud of them. So you can find this project on github.com Cerner as well. Um, so to start, I want to talk about the name a little bit because it's kind of a crazy name, right? What does Joala mean? So um, it's actually Hindi for Blaze. Um, we open sourced this during a release named Joala, so we thought it would be pretty cool to name the project after the release, and hence the name Joala came out. Also, I want to start with giving a huge thank you to the dev team that was part of making this happen. Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication. You would think a graphics designer made this picture, but it wasn't. It was one of our architects who spent nights and weekends because he just loved doing it. Uh, so definitely wanted to show it off. Um, so a lot of you are probably wondering, what is Joala? What does this talk about? Um, and it's really easy to just answer something like that, but I like telling stories, and I can use PowerPoints to do so, so I'm gonna tell a story. Um, so at the end of the day, we all have a basic problem we try to solve, all right? We want an application. We want clients to use it, all right? We don't care if they're web browsers, if they're phones, if they're desktops. It's gotta be reachable over an internet, and it's gonna sit on a server somewhere, whether it's virtualized or, you know, in uh, my garage, it's a server that's hosting some stuff. Um, so, you know, if you're here, you're probably familiar with a certain set of technology that can make this happen. Um, myself and the team, we are familiar with a set of technology that starts with a JDK. Um, on top of it, we put Tomcat, and now we have a place that we can have applications reside. Um, now that I build my application, Next thing I do is I deploy it. So I deploy my application to Tomcat. Now, an application alone isn't enough, right? Because you've also got a set of configurations that go with it. So when I have one Tomcat that I'm dealing with, it's manageable, I write some scripts, I do a couple things, and you know, I'm good. But we all know that one JVM alone cannot be enterprise, right? One JVM can easily get locked up, it can go down, and all of a sudden your users are getting 404 errors, and they're thinking, wow, this site sucks. I'm never gonna use it again. So knowing what we know, we easily fix this by adding a second one. Um, you've probably been to many, many talks about how that's done here. Um, so going forward with it, you know, now we have two JVMs, they're both running our apps, they're both configured, but we need users to be able to use both of them. So what's the next thing that we do? Well, we put Apache Web Server in front of it and we load balance between the two. So that's a, you know, pretty common definition for, especially the folks that are here, of how you want to set up a topology. But at the end of the day, two JVMs and one web server isn't enough, right? Because first, you need two of everything. Um, so now we get into more of a picture that kind of looks like this, and it's starting to look more and more complex, right? Now I've got many operating systems, whether some are in the cloud, some are bare metal, doesn't really matter. I've got many JVMs, I've got many web servers, and I probably have some other set of load balancers in front of all of them because that's just a typical topology. Applications scale differently. So if I have two apps, and if I'm at a topology like this, I'm probably at the point where I don't have one app anymore, now I have several, right? Or maybe I have a dozen, who knows? Um, but they scale differently. So one app might go across 15 JVMs, one might only need three, one might need two. But each app has its own characteristics, it needs traffic load balance to it. Um, you need to be able to manage it, you know. And once it starts looking like this, it starts to get really, really, really complicated, right? Um, it's still manageable, but it still gets complicated. But, you know, typically this isn't the end. And eventually our topology blows up and we have something that looks more like this. Um, but we have what we wanted, right? We have our clients. Our clients are hitting us through the internet you know, maybe a couple levels of VPNs, who knows, to our load balancers, um, to a big giant mess that we have to manage. 
is we don't just get to deploy the stuff and we're done, right? Like that's not how it works. It'd be nice if that's how it worked, but we wouldn't have jobs. We probably wouldn't be here if it was that easy. Um, so this is a problem. Um, this problem has actually been addressed by you know several um, different ways, but there wasn't what we were looking for, all right? Um, we started working on this three or four years ago. We knew we had lots of Tomcats, you know, we wanted to be able to scale to thousands of servers, thousands of JVMs, you know, hundreds of thousands of web servers. So it kind of like, what do you do? So the build versus buy question comes around, right? Can we buy something? And we look around and there were some commercial products available, but we like open source, we like Apache, we didn't want to get locked into a vendor. Um, so we started thinking, we started thinking, we started talking to whoever we could, and there was nothing in the open source community that would give me a single pane of glass I'd be able to manage this topology. So being the developers that we are, and having a bright idea and wanting to do something cool, we built Joala. So what is Joala? Um, this, is a, uh, this is the UI. This is what the UI looks like. Um, Pretty simple, there are three major functions that this app needs to take care of, right? First, I need to be able to define my topology, right? So I need to be able to configure it. What does my topology look like? Do I have, I'm gonna have JVMs, I'm gonna have web servers, I'm gonna have web apps, I'm gonna have external resources, you know, maybe I wanna override a server XML, maybe my logging dot properties, which out of the box doesn't seem to roll on its own, has some problems, but Either way, I need to do my configurations. Um, once I create those configurations, now I need to deploy them. So I need to know what my hosts are, what my ports are. Um, and I want one place to do that. I don't want to have to log into 100 boxes and run a script to be able to do that. Um, I also don't want a giant orchestration engine that's meant to do something completely different that I try to you know, put a couple scripts around to this as well. I want something I can manage and something that gives me real-time feedback. Um, so I've got my stuff configured. I deploy it. Um, using this UI, I generate um, everything that I have here and I deploy it. Now, this only shows two JVMs, a couple of web servers, and it's not, you know, you kind of wonder what it's doing, but in other topologies where you have a hundred of these guys, it's pretty helpful. So um, to, gener to click this and generate about a hundred JVMs takes about five minutes across many, many servers, and I'll get into more details of how that works. Um, so web servers, JVMs, and then I'm not done, right? Everything's deployed, everything's configured, but now I need to be able to operate it. Um, what that means is I need to know what's going on. I need to be able to start and stop JVMs, so, you know. I need to be able to start, stop web servers. I need to know if it's working. Um, so that's when, you know, things start getting a little complicated. I have 100 JVMs and they're attached to one cluster. Um, one goes down, how do I know? Um, so again, the goal being the single pane of glass. Um, I also want some basic support tools. Uh, I don't want to have to SSH into a box and do a thread dump from there. Um, that's a lot of work. I might want to do five thread dumps at the same time over five JVMs. Um, you know, I could have a bunch of SSH windows open and hope I get my timing right, or I could make my life a lot easier, and that's what this did. I also want to audit. If someone's going to go update my heap on one of the JVMs and not tell anyone, I want to know who did it. You may not go into production and make changes, period. You will be caught, and everybody should know. Linux made that very easy with the history file. Unfortunately, Windows made it a little bit more complicated. With Joala, you must be logged in, and you will be audited. Um, so you're thinking this UI looks cool, but I, I use automation. I don't want a UI. Agreed. The UI is basically our way of testing a full set of RESTful APIs on top of it um, that are made for automation. So every function that the UI has has a RESTful API associated to it. So whether you like using Chef, whether you like using Puppet, whether you, you know, use curl, um, it's supported. It's just REST and JSON. Also, we use SSH a lot. Um, Tools similar to this seem to like create like node agents written in Java that hang that you, you know, that have some problems. Um, SSH is pretty reliable. Um, when you talk about you know remoting protocols, SSH is a go-to. Um, so we made use of it. We made use of it being there. We you know, still authenticate with LDAP. We don't go crazy with settings. But 
when we have problems, I still don't remember a single time that SSH was the reason that we had a problem. Um, so that's, this is to kind of give you like an overview, what we're doing, you know, why we did it, um, what we hope to achieve from it. And uh, I'm gonna probably say this a couple times, but I just wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to ApacheCon for letting us be here. It's a ridiculous honor. Um, we open sourced this we know it's not perfect. Thought about waiting until it was perfect, but every single open source model says not to. So uh, everyone here, please download it, play with it. We'll show you the GitHub uh, where you can get it and um, contact us. The, uh, the team can't wait for some downloads to start happening. Um, so going on um, the rest of our agenda, we're gonna go through how you configure, deploy, and manage um, using Joala. So we're just gonna go at a really high level. If you have questions, please ask. Um, I'm gonna gloss over a lot of this stuff because it's not until you really get it in front of you and start playing with it that you kind of know, like you get more questions out of that. So uh, again, please ask if you have any questions at all. Um, so the first thing about configuration is the media. Um, by media, what I mean is the JDK. Um, the Tomcat binaries, the uh, Apache binaries. Not all my Tomcats might want to run on the same version. Um, not all my JDKs might want to be the same version. When I got hundreds and thousands of them, maybe I want to update a couple Tomcats to one version at a time while keeping the other one stable. Maybe I want to do the same thing with Java. Um, so what we do is we associate a media to a JVM or a web server, and that gives you full control of what gets pushed out when you do the deployment. Um, another term I'd like to talk about is groups. Um, this is very similar to the word cluster, but every app server vendor you go to, and depending on who you talk to, even within Tomcat, a cluster can have different meaning. So to take any confusion out of that, we didn't want to use the word cluster, because we're really not using Tomcat clusters. Um, but we wanted to use the word group. So what is a group? A group is an application or set of applications, say one to n of them, um, it goes across one JVM or many JVMs, and it goes across one web server or many web servers. It shares common resources. So my group is gonna share the same couple JDBC connections. Um, it shares common heap settings, it shares common characteristics. So when I can deploy a group, I expect every member of my group to look identical. Um, I really like using Outlook as an example of what different groups can be, because this is an example that I've heard about since um, SOA started getting popular. But if you think about a UI that has contacts, calendar, some messaging, in our, our old world, when we used to send a request and wait for a response to come back and something would happen to the server, you get a big fat 404 or 500 or something like that, and it didn't work. Um, all of a sudden, SOA came around, ajax -y kind of services came around, and now you can split up your UI to SOA kind of services. So if the calendar service is down, well, the messaging and the contact services are still working. So think of a group as one of those logical groupings. Um, it could be my calendars, my messages, my address book, um, and you'll kind of see that repeated within these slides. But to me, anyway, it's just a really good way of picturing um, what a SOA is and you know, kind of even where the next world of microservices is going at a much deeper, deeper level. Um, so anyway, so now my group's defined. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna create some JVMs. Um, it's, we tried to keep the minimal content in Joala. We didn't wanna have a copy of data that you might have in other places, but there was some information that we were just gonna need within here. Um, you need to know the JVM name. You need to know the host it's going to. You need to know some ports. Uh, unfortunately, there are just five we really care about. Um, we add a status path because, we, you know, in case some, um, a heartbeat fails, we want to be able to just check the status of it. We also add a username and password down here because you might want your JVM running as a specific user with a specific password. Um, just really common things. Again, we try to keep this as bare as possible and let other tools manage. Um, your, uh, yes. So 
um, a Tomcat JVM, which includes a web server. So when I say JVM, I'm really meaning, I really mean Tomcat. Um, in this case, when we say add JVM, think add Tomcat. Um, the internals of how it gets configured, we keep out of the scope of this. Um, we somehow tie into it a little bit, but there are other tools that are much better at managing that. Um, we didn't intend for this to be a property manager. We didn't intend for it to kind of take over the whole topology, but we intended for it to manage to be able to manage your Tomcat, Apache, and Java topology. Um, so when I say that, um, I know a lot of people use things like Chef and Puppet, and these aren't the only parts of your topology. You have databases, you have you know, a disk set up, you wanna use um, users in Linux and other things. So it's kind of like a separation of concerns. Um, and the concerns of this are basically your Tomcat topology and how you're load balancing within it. Um. Um, it's just a uh, clever piece of Java script that goes down your pipeline and stuff and goes in there. Oh. Um, if you think about it, it's being used from a UI. We typically don't use this from a UI, and we use it from automation. So what happens is you have a REST call, and you pass these parameters into a REST call. And then if you have something like Chef or Puppet, you have something that sits there and says, you started at 8080, you started at 8180, you started at 8280. Um, so it was kind of a challenge when we were putting this together to figure out you know, who owns what and how you keep the two in sync. Um, but the idea is that you always start from a single source of truth. So whether that's your source control system or something else, you know, we like source control. And uh, you just make a couple rest calls. So um, ideally, if someone makes a change in this and doesn't change your version control, it gets wiped away. Um, so next thing's a web server. So again, we went with the minimal config that we could. You have your HTTP and HTTPS ports, a name and a host, and you have the groups, all right? Um, so within your web server, you're typically load balancing to multiple groups. Um, so if I have like four or five apps, your mod proxy config is going to have all those four or five apps defined using the balancer members and spraying to them. You want to define your load balance weights and everything else in there. So a JVM will typically be aligned to one group because you know, we typically don't want to deploy too many apps to one JVM, but a web server go is a little bit different. Um, so at this point, you've got your media groups and JVMs and web servers. The next thing you want to do is add your web apps. The reason you want to put your web apps in here is because you need to know where to load balance and what your context paths are. Um, so at this point, we add a couple web apps. Uh, we tell it, we give it a couple hints that we're um, going to use later. So we're just showing them here, like, do I want to load balance across all my servers for this app, this group, or do I want to just stay local? Um, do I want SSL or do I want non-SSL? Um, that's typically defined by application because one application you might want to be secure. Another one, for some reason, you might want it to be open to the world and not care about it being behind an SSL connection. Um, then the next thing that comes in, we called resources. So the tricky part when you're doing this is um, it's real easy to deploy Tomcat and Apache. Like super, super easy, right? You deploy it, the defaults are 80, 80, 80, and it's up and running. But when you might have 10 of them on a box, or three of them, or four of them, it starts getting a little tricky, right? Like, well, I can't just unzip, start, and have them all run on 8080, right? Because only one's going to win, the first one. All the others are going to fail. Um, so what we did is we took all of the stuff that we defined over the last several slides, all this data. Um, again, think of it being fed completely through REST APIs, um, all automated. But we want it to be accessible in here, and we want this tool to own it. So what we did is we made use of Groovy templates right here. So um, we didn't want to come up with another scripting language, but we wanted some way to do substitution so that one file can be used across 100 JVMs. Um, Groovy seems to be a really natural thing for Java developers to understand. Um, so we embedded a Groovy interpreter in this. Um, I think I've done that in about 10 other projects as well. We also made these properties over here accessible. So um, if you look down here, you have your JVM HTTP port. Here you can see all your JVMs, and if you drill down to just one, you'll get that HTTP port. So um, we have a template and template preview screen here. When I go from my template to my template preview, I'll see that it gets generated right over here, and I'll see the actual value. So you know, when I'm setting up my first one, I can do the eyeball trick, make sure everything's working, and I'm good to go. Um, the guys who wrote this, I just want to give a shout out to them. 
you know, we started with, well, we're just gonna make it quick and dirty and just text. And I came to work a week later, everyone's smiling. Look what we did. <laughs> There's also a copy and paste feature for these boards, so you can copy to your clipboard and then paste them right into your um, XML. So uh, Jed, if you're listening, great work. <laughs> um, so we have Groovy templates and they do substitution. Um, when you upload the template, um, I, use, I like to use logging.properties as an example of a template because if you're not careful and you deploy a Tomcat, you put it into production, you don't look at logging up properties, all of a sudden your disk is eaten up by a big giant log file. Um, so that's one thing that we commonly override across all of our JVMs. Um, if you guys wanna make that a little bit easier for us, it'd be nice if they rolled after a certain <laughs> amount of, uh, after a certain size. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we just went with the default at first. Um, we were gonna move to log4j, but once we tweak the uh, you know, Java properties, uh, works pretty well, but that's one of the first things that we add to one of our topologies is make sure the log files roll. Um, any, uh, I'll go one more slide, but the idea is you upload the file, you give it a deploy path, um, the file you'll want locally. We also have this idea or concept of metadata that you can see down here. Now, this is nice, but once you start adding pieces um, that we put into our metadata, like where do you want to deploy it to? This is an example. Um, where do you, what do you want to call it on the remote end? Do you want it to belong to just this one JVM down here, or do you want it to go to all of the JVMs and trickle down? So, uh, you know, one approach was to create a database and add a column every time that we came up with the clever use of, you know, another property. Um, another one was just to go with the uh, poor man's approach and go with JSON um, and metadata, which we really like because it lets us kind of grow and expand dynamically. Um, yeah, absolutely. So when you have automation, you can just upload, once you get used to these files, you upload a metadata and a metadata preview, or I'm sorry, and, and preview it. Um, but then in your automation, you've got this text file checked in, you can look at it, if it's changed, you know because it's version control. Um, this is honestly one of the clunkier parts of the application, we try to make this simpler. Um, and we've tried several times, but it's like, you can never get it just right. So if anybody has good ideas or wants to play around with it, please let us know. Um, so just to talk about this a tiny little bit more um, and you know, to give a, go further on that same example, you've got your server XML. We all have a server XML. We know that this one file must be changed because you have to have unique ports. Um, you have your metadata in the server XML. So um, the metadata also uses the properties. So my deploy path, you know, op JVMs, my JVM name, the comp directory, and then I want to call it server XML on the opposite side. So this Groovy template, this metadata, they go into Joala, it goes to the config, the database engine, and it comes out, and look, I have two unique ports that are gonna get sprayed across my topology, and now that's not something I have to worry about, and I can actually see it working, because if it doesn't work, after I try to start them, they're not gonna start. There, so there is many, many approaches to the exact same thing, so we do both. Um, this is to make the example extremely easy. But yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, where you can say, this is my property file, and these are the properties that I wanna use, um, add variables. There's different approaches. This one's really nice and easy when you're using this tool, because the variable you're not gonna see until it's on where you're using or when you're running, whereas this, you can like, take a quick look at it and see what's going on. But using this tool, you can do both. Well, so that one file, um, let me go back to this slide. Where is that one file in this topology? Well, so how many of those files do I have now? As many as you have now. So do any other thing? Let's me have one server XML, right? Um, and like, and that get, goes all over the place. So server XML is the only thing I need to tokenize or worry about. And I also think you have all, all the configuration stuff you have to change, you can just leave it with variables and just change your start script to leave the variables. So just, you could just roll over a new Tomcat version and uh, it will go. I'm not 100% following uh, what you're talking about. I, um, but yeah, if we, um, 
I would love to catch up after this and talk about it because I, uh, yeah, if you have a better idea, please let us know. Um, but it's like, you know, when you've got a thousand operating you know, OSs, and it's kind of like, how do you manage this kind of stuff? All right, Let me jump through these again. Um, so anyway, so that is, um, that's how you create the resources. Um, and that's what resources are for. So again, we hope people don't go too crazy using these because they are a little bit complicated. We prefer everyone just to use the binaries out of the box um, and whatever tools they're used to. But to be able to use one binary across many, many, many machines, this becomes extremely useful. And logging up properties, that's what we're gonna demo later. That's a really good example because we wanna be able to download Tomcat, um, not change it whatsoever, deploy it, and then override the things that we really need to that, would you know, that are gonna prevent us from running in a production environment like a giant log file. Um, all right, so we've got everything configured. The next step is to deploy, all right? Um, so we have a couple different options to deploy. You can deploy everything at once, or you can deploy just one web server. So you're gonna see this pattern repeating over and over and over. Um, again, REST APIs for absolutely everything. So you can do it from the UI, it's good for troubleshooting, but it would be nicer to have kind of like a workflow engine that does this stuff for you so you can repeat um, as needed. Um, you can also delete remotely too. So this not only deletes from Joala, but del deletes the remote service. So when you do the deployment, it actually creates a Windows or a Red Hat service, a CentOS service, and runs it that way. Um, so same pattern for the JVMs, generate all of them. Um, or generate one of them. So just to go in a little bit of detail about how this works, um, what Joala has a local binary directory. Um, when you actually build it using Gradle, we've provided a way, a Gradle task that you can point at this JDK um, that, you know, hosted on the internet, this um, Tomcat and this Apache. It'll go download it, package it all together, um, create a local JVM, deploy Joala to it, and then you'll just basically have everything lying there. Um, and we'll show that during the demo later. So we try to make the development of this as simple as possible to where you can run one Gradle task and you have a system up and running. Um, so again, um, what internally we're doing when we do a deployment is we say, I want to generate this JVM or I want to generate all of them. I go and I take my local JVM that I've defined, take my tarball, I untar on zip, do all that good stuff. I take all the overrides, I lay it on top of that, um, then I, S I zip it back up, um, SCP it to the remote end. Um, I also add one more thing, I add an agent. So we hooked into the Tomcat lifecycle listener because there are states that we care about Tomcat. So over here, you'll see started and stopped. Um, you guys probably know much better than I do how many states there are, but there were about four or five we really cared about. So start, uh, it started, starting, initialized, stopping, stopped. So as the JVM's coming out, coming up, it's doing a, um, it's actually using JGroups, and you can choose TCP, IP, or multicast to send a little packet with a message saying, here I am, here's what I'm doing. Uh, so when we create these dudes, we put that agent in there, and we ship it. So that's, um, that's how this works. Now the web servers are a little different. None of us wanted to write a um, C++ plugin for Apache, so uh, we're just doing a uh, ping to uh, an Apache static um, URL. We thought about it, but. Um, anyway, so you can remove one JVM. Um, again, when you're troubleshooting and you're trying to figure out, I've got 50 of these and they're having a common problem, but I only want to troubleshoot one of them, this becomes really, really handy. Like, Say you keep getting heap errors and you just want to increase the heap on one versus all 50. Um, you can go in here, tweak a setting of v.bat, redeploy, and within a couple minutes, you're up and running. Um, if you want to add more JVMs to your running system, you can do that. Um, it's a little, a little bit of work. You create a couple new JVMs, generate them, regenerate your web server config, and then you start load balancing to everything. Um, and then resources as well. So sometimes you don't want to regenerate an entire JVM or entire web server. Um, sometimes you just want to copy one file over. Um, and yeah, you could open an SCP, you could do an SCP command, you could open a local shell, you could send it over that way. You could also go over here, make a couple tweaks, right click and say send. Yeah. Um, we thought that was kind of useful. So um, again, you can do it to all of your JVMs, your entire group, or you can just do it to one or two at a time. 
Um, the next thing is, now that you've configured and you've deployed your environment, the next thing is how do you manage it? Um, so that, that's kind of the hardest part, right? Because now I've got all these servers and they're all over the place. And one of them is finicky for some reason, or two of them, or sometimes I'm getting a 503 back from my web server and I can't figure out what's going on. Or I want to add um, like mod proxy with the load balancing. Can't tell you how many tweaks to that you have to make to try to kind of figure out why you're getting 503s, how long your retries are supposed to be. And it's really nice to be able to take one of those and send it across all of your web servers that are load balancing across all of your JVMs. Um, so also you can do things at a group operation. So if I have a huge topology, I don't want to go clicking 100 different things. I can just start and stop everything from one place. I've got a little lights. Uh, that was a client feature that we thought was really cool. So green means everything's up and running and is good. Yellow means it's not. I thought that was nice and simple. Um, so start, stop. Have that per group and you know, per web server again. Um, now a couple things that we find really useful, you know, we use the mod proxy balancer page a lot. And um, when we built this, we built this for balancer manager. So um, I can't tell you how useful that um, page with Apache is. We use it all the time and we actually link to it. So when you deploy, you can just click this link and go to it and see what your JVMs are doing. If you want to put a couple on hot standby or disable them or something like that, you can do all that from here. Um, again, think single pane of glass. Um, we also link to the hp.conf because you know, if you need to figure out what's going on with your web server, typically that's the place to go. Um, and usually when we look at this, it's trying to figure out why the load balancing isn't working the way we want it to. No, we use, we use just the one. We didn't go with like splitting up the hp.conf into many. Um, we, uh, we went for the simple approach at first, um, but it'd be really cool to add that. Um, because I mean, at, usually you're not looking at this file because you're trying to figure out anything other than why your load balancing isn't working the way you want it to. I mean, by the time you have this thing up and running, your SSL is working, you know that's going, you, know, you, you, know, you have all your includes, what, your app's functioning, but then you're coming here to troubleshoot it later. Um, some other things that we thought were really useful. Has anyone ever had to go into an environment where you have like 50 JVMs and drain all of them? How do you do that? Uh, usually they have a uh, configuration switch and uh, before any configuration switch they go down to the process. But what if you want to QS them or uh, what if you want to drain them? What if you want to you know, like give the sessions that are active a half hour before you just take down the server? So that's precisely what we did with the mod proxy load balancer. But if you use the balancer ma manager page, what you have to do is you go to the balancer manager, you click the link for the JVM, you go to another page, click drain, click OK, do it another 50 times. Um, that's one of your web servers. <laughs> then if you have multiple web servers, you have to do that across all of them. So we thought we would make that easier by adding this button and this button, giving them REST APIs. So if you want to drain all of the sessions from one web server, you can do it right from here and just call a REST API. Or if you want to do it across all your web servers, you can do it right from here. Um, so we, uh, our clients found out pretty useful. Um, and we thought it was a pretty fun, quick thing to write. So if you use this, that just comes with it. Um, some things for JVMs, start, stop, all the JVMs within a group, start, stop, just one of them. Again, think REST. Um, we also added a couple useful features that you might want from single pane of glass in one place. Um, so uh, you can link to Tomcat Manager, you can do a thread dump, you can do a heap dump. We'd like to get a little bit further for, um, in the Tomcat Manager to where we can do a single sign-on because right now you have to log in twice. Um, but Tomcat Manager gives you so many great things that you, know, um, you might need, right? You can see what your JVM's doing, you can see all your user sessions, um, you have that JMX proxy servlet. Um, it opens a window with the thread dump. The heap dump stays local on the machine because we don't want to download, like, somebody clicks five heap dumps on, like, six gig uh, machines. Well, well, if you're looking for, like, a long-running request, you want to take a few thread dumps. Um, 
that's going further than we have. You know, there's tools like Splunk or Logstash for that, but yeah, I really wanted to build that into this, but kind of stop thinking like, what is the separation of concerns, right? Like at, at what point have you gone too far? And you know, you can download Logstash and it does access log great. Um, great. Gives you nice pictures, it's free. Um, <laughs> it's a good feature. Um, <laughs> well, we don't download, you don't download the heap dump. So basically we just give you a little message or a response saying it's saved over here, go get it. <laughs> Cause that would have been interesting. The first guy that tried to do all the heap dumps uh, <laughs> and streaming them to one server in a retail environment. Good question. Um, because we have SSH here, it makes our life real easy, right? Um, so we just SSH and do either JMAP or J command. Um, yeah, to do. We aren't, we have never tested with IBM. Yeah, we thought about it, um, but at the end of the day, I um, really like SSH, <laughs> so at <it> all. <laughs> um, so, I mean, JMX, you know, like, I mean, if you think about it, right, they're probably both doing, you know, like, I'm, I don't know the JVM well enough to know exactly what's going on, but they're probably both doing very similar things. But I trust an SSH command. And we had to tune SSH to get it to work in here, too. Um, I don't know if you've ever used JSCH before, but when you try it out of the box and you try, like, 100 connections at once, it's not meant for that. <laughs> um, um, so we had to do some clever pooling for that to work. Um, all right, so just to go a little bit further, um, don't want to totally run out of time. I want to talk about the architecture, just in case anyone here is interested and wants to download it, play around with it. Um, so uh, we're using JDK. Uh, we're using Tomcat. No big surprises there. The database that we were talking about, or like the config data that we store, we embedded a little H2 inside of the uh, um, inside of the application, so H2 starts with the application instead of um, you know it's a very lightweight. To those of you not familiar with that, it's a very lightweight database. It's very fast. It comes with a really nice UI that you can do SQL against. Um, so we just started as part of the app. It takes like a couple seconds. Um, all the config data is there, and again, you get a console with it, so you can do like relational database queries against it. Um, we're using Spring. So nothing uh, too out of the ordinary there. We use JGroups so that the remote JVMs and Joala can talk to each other. Um, that just kind of hides the TCP IP layer for us. JSCH for all SSH. Um, we're not just calling out to an SSH client. We actually did you know, full Java. Um, our logging is SLF for J, log for J. Groovy for the templating, because Groovy's cool. Um, and the UI was written using Facebook's React. <coughs> Um, if you would like to use this with development purposes, please visit our GitHub, github.com Cerner Joala. At the same time, please take a look at our other open source products um, within the same space under Cerner. Um, you basically, we try to make it as easy as possible, install a couple things that I'm sure you're familiar with, get JDK and Gradle. Unfortunately, Gradle 2.9 for right now. We're very sorry to anyone that wants to use 3. Um, you do a uh, clone, run, um, the Tomcat zip, or a zip Joala Tomcat, creates the full thing for you, open it up, Catalina bat run, you're good to go. Um, if you want to contribute, here's a whole page on instructions on how to do so. Um, please reach out to me directly or anyone on the team, they will be more than happy to work with you and uh, get, um, um, get you going. Um, this is no different than your typical GitHub for um, pull request process. And now for a demo. Um, and before the, um, anyway, do you want to go? Yeah. All right. We have just five minutes, so, you know. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh,
Yeah, so think about, you've got like, so you've got different strategies you can do with that, right? You can have two groups. You can have group old and group new. Um, you deploy group new on all these different port numbers, right? And then you bring that up, that, you know, and this all depends on what your topology is, how much space you have, what your operating systems look like, but you can have them going side by side. You can also do one at a time. Um, everything has a REST API, everything's scriptable. Um, it, it really just depends on if you want to do an in-place upgrade on your current machine, you'd have a different strategy than if you had like a blue-green network and a whole different set of servers. Um, if you want to do canary testing, you would have a different strategy than that. But all the different permutations are supported here. So we need X for what amount of time for each of that. Well, you can do your old group in there and you bring up the new group in another place and the new group is online and the old group is offline. Mm -hmm. If, if you want to do it that way, you could do just one at a time as well. Um, you could do five at a time. Um, this really, uh, this this is granular enough that you can do one at a time, but it's also set to work the group level that you can do the whole thing at a time. Um, it really just kind of depends on you know what does your hardware look like, um, how much free resources you have. You know, I might I might not have double my RAM on my current server to be able to do both at the same time, but I might because RAM's not that expensive anymore and being able to do an upgrade all in one place might be what I choose. Um, we, uh, you know, we've got a lot of different use cases, so we don't want to load anymore because uh, blue green networks are kind of trying to get more and more common as cloud becomes more popular. Um, but not everyone, you know, we still use bare metal as well. Cool. Do you find vendor parity features we use with the JDK tools? So each of the machines which are running the Tomcat, so do you guys bundle the JDK? Yeah. Yes. So if you saw the first configure screen, you include a JDK. So we, um, you expect a JDK to be local, and then you can have different JDKs. Um, Jabal just tests that that JDK is in a remote place that it should be. If it is, it doesn't set it again. Um, if it's not, it does. And talking about that, if you think of the use of this with microservices, right now we're just doing Tomcats uh, and um, web servers. But we want, you know, you're just running Java dash jar with a microservice. Um, so that's kind of uh, some of the next things we're looking at. That would be kind of pretty, pretty cool if you just go spray 500 microservices with this, which would be like a minor tweak to the app. And then we already have um, code that adds Tomcat as a service. So really, if you did Java dash jar, and that typically a microservice doesn't have on a reboot goes away, right? Mm -hmm. But we've already got the pieces that would make it a service on it as a reboot, it would still come back up. Um, so okay. just, that's not our business case today. Okay, we just have three minutes. Uh, <laughs> this is the group which uh, Steve was talking about, which is not to confuse with cluster in the group. So what I have right now in demo is uh, I have a CentOS JVM running. I have one web server and two JVMs. When I say JVMs, as Steve mentioned, it's uh, two Tomcat instances running. Um, so this is the console, which uh, you can see there's uh, Two JVMs have started and one web server started. Uh, let me go and quickly show you the load balancer. So if you can see, this is the load balancer. It's just direct link. It's nothing but. Uh, no, hold on. It. No, no, no. Oh, okay. So for each JVM, if you want to drain it, you have to you click there. Click there, and then down. scroll down, and then you. Click that radio button. And yeah, so that's how you. That's a hundred times you have to do those things. You got it across three different web servers, three hundred times. Uh, so we thought it'd be cool if you just click one button. Yep. So you can come and drain from here, and that's what it does basically. Um, we did screen three. <laughs> yeah. So um, I have two JVMs. Uh, so this is my setup right now: one uh, Linux uh, CentOS uh, virtual machine with one web server balancing across two JVMs. Um, so I want to show you quickly about the uh, resources. So say on one of the JVMs, I want to change the logging dot properties or add it. So right now it is, that's what we did already. But if you can notice here, you want to change the size. So for example, it's uh, I think 50 megabits for per file. Um, you can go and change it. Actually, it's, it should be this. I can go and change it on one JVM. Okay. 
save it and it's saved and I can deploy this it's gonna give me a message you probably it's not it's running so we restrict the user not to do hard deployment because some files might get restricted and it might restart the JVM there's a workaround to this you can add a meta flag hot deploy equals true and that would deploy it on the running JVM but right now I'm gonna stop it and you can go here on the operations page stop it and deploy that that would deploy the logging dot properties to that host can you manage JVM that you don't install? Mm, no it's not for that. Yeah. Because we, when we deploy, we put an agent file there. That's how it talks to this. So the status you get, you won't get any status. We've had a lot of people ask that. Um, we haven't had a business need to write it. It'd be really, really cool. Um, okay. So uh, yeah. So I'll, what I do wanted to do quickly is add. So we have two JVMs running, and we want to add one more. Um, to you know, for some reason we have a load, more load, and then I'm going to add a new JVM on the fly. Sent with six. I'm gonna just name it as test. This is my local host. I've just given a host name to my local file. I'm gonna put the port as like say 40,000. It repopulates the port. I don't want to shut down port. I can give it minus one. Status path is where the JVN pings when the J groups fail. So this is not nothing but a Tomcat uh, GIF file. And then I'm gonna add it to this group. And hit, uh, oh, I can need to select the JDK. This is, I need it to run on JDK 1.8. I need one Apache Tomcat. This is 7055, I think. Uh, this is bundled along with this. So when I say deploy, so right, I hit okay. So what I've done right now is saved all that configuration on the file. It's not at on the host. I go to the operations page and you see that but this is in a new state what I want to do is uh, go and say hey go and deploy this to this host what's happening behind the scenes is uh, what uh, Steve talked about uh, is we are creating a service on that host put it in NNT moving all the file like the custom logging dot property which was applicable to that group is the same file all the configuration with this two JVMs will go in that JVM and create a service and then I can once it's done I can start it and then I what I can do is I want to balance it across uh, now this web server across three JVMs. So I'm going to stop this JVM and regenerate it to so while it's getting generated. Okay, so it's generated. So what happened behind the scene is we pushed out the JDK, the Tomcat in a nice uh, instance folder, and I'm going to start it. And if you can notice, it's going to change the states, and that's where the J groups come in. So it was stopped before. Now it's going to hit starting. You see that change to starting, and then it's eventually getting started. And again, we hooked into the lifecycle states within the JVM. So and we I'm, have one minute to go. Uh, yep. We've got the one minute warning. Yes, yeah, so stop it. So I want to balance this third JVM across the proxy, mod proxy. I'm going to stop it, regenerate this file. What it's going to do is regenerate the HTTP dconf. Since it's templatized, it's going to add this third JVM into that balancer. Oh and push it to the host and it's it's going to delete the service create the service put it in any d and um, it's going to show up yep it's done and so i have a web server balancing three jvms now it's, i'm just hit started and it started now so oh, i didn't show it so the my application was a hello world app i'm just going to type it if you notice so this is I had three JVMs one running on 10,000 the other one on 20 and the third one which I added was on 40,000 so it just I've added a round robin I'm gonna hit F5 it's the 40,000 this is the new one which I added if you notice this is the one, test one, instance okay do that extra, um, the group. okay just the team yeah um, again thank you everybody it is 
seriously an honor. Um, this is our first Apache Con that we get to speak with. Um, this is our team. We wanted to make sure everybody got a chance to say hello to the Apache Con audience. Again, thank you, everyone. Thank you.